You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionPit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the auction block All right, everybody, that music means we are coming in hot here on a Thursday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. It is time for your bi-weekly options extravaganza known around the globe as the Option Block. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, OptionsInsider.com. Reminding you a couple of things at the top. A, make sure you're listening to the full network. If you're not, you're missing out on Man, a whole bunch of other great stuff. B, if you like what you hear this show, anything else on said network, throw a like, a star, a comment. All that stuff does in aggregate help new people. And man, they are legion. Continue to discover the network and hopefully get steered straight in their approach to options. And then, of course, last but not least, if you want to go above and beyond, you're one of the hardcores who asked us for years, hey, can you offer something on top of the network? Well, for you folks, we created it. It's been few years now, at least, I think coming up three plus, I don't, I lose track, <laughs> but uh, the pro, the options insider.com slash pro for you folks who need a little bit extra in your lives. We got it there for you. All sorts of fun as we go around the horn, see who's joining us for a little bit of fun on the old OB part du this week. First, let's go out to the quiet, the sleepy Hamlet known as St. Charles, where we are joined once again. By the uncle list of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tusa from St. Charles Wealth Manager. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the Thursday OB, sir. Can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing right now. Whoa. The OB, baby. It is the perfect activity for a Thursday. I do, I do agree with you over there, sir. And also joining us as Dial the Needle all the way to the south, where we are joined 
in the southern volatility mecca, some might call it, by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Meatball, how go things in the southern vol mecca, dare I say it, Mexico adjacent, sir, almost? It's uh, it's a little cloudy here today. Um, you know, we had a little rain last night, but uh, outside of that, the weather is good. Um, the our, our our road runners that live next door seem extremely happy, and uh, and yeah, all is well here in Austin, Maybe. Texas. <laughs> Speaking of Mexico and volatility, I did hear there is a Bangin volatility conference in Mexico City. Every year down to FIA, I learned about it, which kind of surprised me. So you don't think of Mexico City as being a, a bastion of volatility, yet apparently that is the case. So I have to go check it out one of these days and, and see what all the fuss is about as we move the needle now all the way back to the east, to Cebo East, where we are joined, fashionably be late as always, because he was busy shepherding the children around Cebo East. Yes, he is just that guy, the flow master, also uh, the ring master on Bring Your Child to Work Day, but glad he could spare a few minutes for us. Uh, Mr. Flow Master, how go things in Cebo East that is now overwhelmed with kids, I hear? Uh, things are pretty good. Uh, yes, I was nominated to be the uh, coordinator for Bring Your Kid to Work Day by somebody, so I said yes, and we have about 38 kids in the office uh, we had actually a virtual tour of the trading of this SPX crowd from Chicago, and we actually had a pretty great game of Pit, which is like a trading card game, which um, Rob Hawking from Cebo Labs was like, okay, we're going to do this. And we, we had a Pit game with 30 kids in New York and about 40 in Lenexa and about 50 or so, actually maybe closer to 100 in Chicago. Uh, it was pretty wild. It was very funny. And if you've never played the game, it's actually kind of amusing. Uh, you try to corner the market on various commodities. But I actually replaced one of the cards uh, that was oil with a set of SPX Zero DTE cards. I was going to say, I, I think you wrote in VIX or something. Okay, SPX Zero Day. Okay, I got it. Exactly. So so we're having fun. Everything's uh, Everything is good, but I, I'm, I'm happy to take a little break from the – children and uh, spend some time with with you grown-ups i will say bring your child to work day was my favorite day back on the trading floor just because it was the most relaxed you would see the trading floor it was the most pg you would ever see the trading floor everyone was on their best behavior when their kid was standing next to them uh so it was kind of funny what a stark contrast uh it would make between uh, let's say the regular typical trading day and they bring your child to work day when all of a sudden everyone was minding their p's and q's a very different experience as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block it's time to break down the latest topics trades and trends in the world of options it's time for the trading block all right let's get to it listeners as i mentioned at the top of the show we are coming in hot maybe not as hot as we were uh, at the start of the session today, but still pretty darn hot out there. Uh, earnings last night really seemed to spook a lot of folks, mostly Meta. Meta selling off in the after hours nearly 100 handles at one point. Uh, still, people were wringing their hands about it. You could look at it and say it still has, oh, another 300 to go before it's back to pretty much where it was when we were talking about it not that long ago in those, in those Death Watch polls and it was threatening to break 100 and indeed sub 100 for a while there, so... Got a ways to go to revisit those levels, but it's still selling off quite a bit last night. Kind of spooked everybody. Ford also not exactly knocking the cover off the ball. A lot of things not really knocking the cover off the ball out there on the earnings front. All that conspiring to when we came in this morning, S&P was back below that magical, mythical 5,000 level. Now as we're, we were off well over one, uh, over one and a half percent, I believe, uh, at one point. Now, of course, uh, that sell off still pretty firm. We are still pretty firmly in the red, but mitigating somewhat. S&P off about three quarters of a percent right now. A NASDAQ off about 1.1%. Dow off about 1.2%. And let us not overlook our friends, small caps, whom Brian was looking to buy straddles on on our pro Q&A earlier this week. Uh, small caps off about 1.1% out there as well. So a hot start to the day. You know, we've been watching this for a while now. What does this mean when we threaten 5,000, when we break through it? We had a flash poll last week where you folks said you thought it was going to be lookout below. And for a while there it was. Now the every time we get below it, it seems like the bulls get the bit in their teeth and try to drive it back north. So we're definitely vacillating around and fighting around this 5,000 level. 
All that a long way around to saying uh, VIX is still frothy, but coming in a little bit. Uh, at a 16 and a half when we kicked off the show. Puts it down almost a full point, about eight tenths of a point from where it was on Monday. A VIX again still frothy, but coming in a little bit. 87, down six points from the Monday show. VXX at a 14 even, down almost half a point, about four tenths of a point. UVXY, 34 and three quarters, down up 1.75, so almost two points out there. UVXY threatening to break the 30 handle soon. That'd be kind of fun. That's, again, we talk about that anemic reverse split. <laughs> uh, starting to play out here. SVIX, 38 and a quarter, getting some juice back up. Not quite a full point, but pretty close, about 0.85. And UVIX, 970, so back below the 10 handle. Was north of 12, I believe, not too long ago. Uh, down about almost three quarters of a point, about 0.7 on the week. So a lot to unpack. Let's go around the horn uh, the opposite of the way we started. Let's go out to the land of the Pied Piper, a.k.a. Sebo East First. Uh, Mr. Flowmaster, if you could tear yourself away from the children, what's been catching your eye out there today, sir, and this week? Oh, wait, hold, hang on. They just brought out the ice cream cart, so I'm oh. going to have to run. You might have to go. I, uh, I understand that. No, I'm kidding. Uh, it's been busy, right? I mean, you, you're right. I was looking at where we were a week ago, and uh, we, we recorded last Thursday. I think the market kind of bottomed out Friday, and we have bounced a decent amount. And you're right. With, you know, Maybe we, we felt like things were getting a little hairy and – there's a little bit of an exhale, but I don't know. Today's a little bit one of those days again, right? It's It seems like every economic number that comes out is just seems to make the possibility of rate cuts harder and harder to believe. And this morning's numbers were, were no exception. So we sold off pretty hard. We had meta earnings dragging us down, too. Uh, it's it's exciting out there. It's, the truth is we've, we've bounced. I mean, VIX shot up to almost 1760, uh, really right on the open. And you know things have kind of calmed down. You know we, we're constantly talking about how the how it seems like every kind of volatility shock is just faster and faster to revert. Maybe this is another one. You know VIX back down around 16. That's that's not uh, that's not you know panic mode at, at at all. And one thing that this has done is this move. You know this kind of additional volatility and downside volatility for a change uh, has kind of led to some steepening of that put call skew. Uh, you know, back to kind of more normal. So, um, you know, just lots to look at. And then obviously we have a lot of other earnings coming too. So, um, you know, there, there's plenty to take apart. By the way, while you were talking, I was just checking out this pit game. I don't know how I've never come across this before. I, I've been around open outcry for a while. I had no idea there was a card game called Pit. Uh, that apparently is old, was developed in 1904 <laughs> based off the board of trade and apparently not developed by a trader, but by a clairvoyant. So there you go. A little bit of a fun factoid for you listeners. Maybe you're like me. Uh, there's apparently an Uno for pit trading. Who knew? <laughs> so uh, you learn something every day here on the old network as we keep on rolling. Let's go out to the Southern Volatility Mecca. Uh, Mr. Meatball, you have young kids. Do you play this uh, Uno for pit traders with them? And then uh, B, what else is uh, lighting up your tape, sir? You know, I've, I have not, but I'm going to have to get it. Uh, have you heard of this game? I, I never even heard of this game. I, I had not heard of it, but I think uh, Valentino will like it. Uh, so, yeah. Hang on. Maybe let, me, let, let me buy some Hasbro calls. <laughs> yeah. Call Clearly, the marketing for nice. the pit <laughs> trading game has been subpar, is all I'm going to say. Yeah, no. Um. You know, we opened up down really, really hard. Um, those meta earnings and, and IBM, for that matter, spooked the market. Uh, Microsoft falling in suit. Uh, what's saving us? NVIDIA. It's the NVIDIA's market. Everyone else just riding along. Uh, the big spend that Meta's putting out is apparently going into NVIDIA. So they're looking at NVIDIA and saying, oh, let's go along it. And that's been able, allowed the the chips to rally. And you've also got some strength in banks. Um you know, that said, I think the earnings tonight, uh, if they follow suit along with the way Meta went, um, this market may have some problems. Uh, Microsoft is the largest company in the world. The Google twins are collectively are the fourth. Um, Meta was fifth and they just uh, missed badly. Uh, so if, if those come in poor, I think that's going to be a real problem. Yeah, I neglected to mention IBM as well. That also uh, combining with Meta to really, really spook a lot of people last night. As we keep on rolling, go out now to the hinterlands of Chicago, where I'm sure out there in the hinterlands where they do not but have, have leisure activity to display these games all the time. Mr. Uncle Mike, surely you've played a, a hearty game of pit 
in your day, sir? I wish I could say I have, but unfortunately I have not. So I got to get that. How is it possible this game has existed for over a century <laughs> and none of us have ever heard of this thing? <laughs> I am deeply befuddled by this, but by all means, continue, sir. Yeah, so I got to get me into that, that pit game. That sounds fascinating. So, yeah, I mean, it's um, the, the bad earnings of last night. Like Mark says, it could just be part one. We'll see what happens tonight. But one thing that is holding true is that the low of the day in the S&P being 49.90, uh, we didn't stay there for long. I think we were down 80, I believe, is what that calc comes out to at one point, approximately. Uh, but we've rallied on there. So it's uh, we're actually, from the low of the day, we are actually up uh, over 45 points in the S&P. So what's everybody worried about? No, just kidding. Uh, so in looking at it, I think we are, um, it is very volatile. I think the one thing that can be strong for the market right now we do have that 5,000 mark and so far since we've crossed it it has kind of served as somewhat of a magnet and so if we do have rotten earnings tonight uh, if these companies mess and uh, bad things happen then we do have 5,000 that could be holding us up uh, the other thing of note today uh, bonds are uh, down on the day today and so when we have economic data that uh, looks like we're not going to cut rates, then uh, bonds go down. And so that's just another thing with which uh, we have to look at. And, um, you know, in terms of some of the individual names that are really catching my eye, IBM was definitely one that uh, you don't see IBM moving like that very often. I mean, when uh, I can't remember in the 1300 episodes that we've done this show, I can't think of any where we've talked to, or we've opened the show with an IBM movement of nine percent on the day because mar the market's freaking out i mean that's typically not an ibm type of thing um but we also do have nvidia nvidia is up three and a half percent on the day uh apple has been holding its ground apple is actually up slightly on the day so um we do have that as a good news thing for the bulls uh jp morgan like mark said banks have been uh fairly strong through this so J.P. Morgan's not up to where its highs were before the earnings, but it has come back quite a bit from its lows. So uh, it doesn't feel like we have a direction as of yet, but I agree with Mark in that uh, tonight's earnings are going to be very important. They are indeed. Let's get out to the market, see what's important out there in the market today, shall we? Let's lighten it up from an overall volume perspective. Let's start in the vol space and move our way out and get indeed i'm surprised that uh, henry didn't scratch out vix on one of those one of those pit cards <laughs> out there uh vix right now actually looking pretty robust as you might expect given a day that started deeply in the red and now is rallying by the way is that not the reason why we have uncle mike on the show he's the lone guy who would come in and say actually from the lows we're up 30 that's <laughs> just the perma bull in him the die in the wool optimist you know you can't you can't beat that out of him at the end of the day. That's why we that's why we need Uncle Mike here on the show at the end of the day. But is it optimistic out there in VIX options land? The answer is a resounding yes. Almost half a million contracts, 496. Now, it's maybe not the 1.1 million maybe you were expecting given the blood red start of the day. Maybe if we had continued on that path and not maybe tried to rally a little bit maybe that would have been the case but right now still looking pretty robust at almost half a million contracts the adv is 910 the big dog out there today looks like seventy-one thousand of the may 36 calls going up for prices around 20 cents including a massive block of fifty-six thousand of them for 20 cents may 36s listeners are you a buyer or are you a seller at 36 cents i am intrigued out there as we keep on rolling spy Spy is off the hook, 5.33 million already. That's fully a million contracts more than we would expect this time of day. So Spy looking pretty robust. The ADV reflecting that 8.14 million out there. The S also looking pretty robust, 1.86 million out there. The ADV, 3.19 million. So usually we expect the S to be at about 1.75 this time of day. So 1.86, I just reran it now, 1.88 to be precise out there. A decently robust day for the S. And again, not that long ago, a couple of years ago, certainly, I mean, it is April, by the way, so we are pretty much celebrating. I'll have to go look at the exact date, but we are celebrating pretty much the onset of 
the zero day revolution, call it what you will. It was April of two years ago where all this stuff kicked off. So certainly two years ago, 1.88 million contracts in the S this time of day, we would have thought the world was falling apart. So a very different frame of reference. What a difference two years makes out there, listeners, as we keep on rolling out to the queues, 2.3 million, pretty much exactly in line with where we expect it right now, the ADB almost for 3.95 million. But I know what you folks are waiting for. You're waiting for the single name stuff. You're out there saying, you know, is it a banger day for single names? Are they blowing the doors off? And you would probably be forgiven for expecting that, given how much how much micro is really the focus right now and how much earnings are weighing on things right now. And yet today, we're only at a paltry 202,000 contracts. So kind of underwhelming from an overall single name options volume perspective. I was looking for at least 250 and hoping for 300, maybe 350, somewhere in that range. Instead, we get to 250 listeners. That gets us to our old friend, my old stomping grounds back in the day, Intel, almost 35 bucks. So managing to buck the trend, up about half a buck now. They had a low of 34 and a half. Looks like that's where they opened. And the high of 35 bucks, which is pretty much where they were a few minutes ago. So they've only had a 50 cent range on the day, but good for 202 thousand contracts on the tape out there right now you know let's let's fire up the flow master machine really quickly and see what people are up to out in intel 8100 of the april 35s again expiring tomorrow so in the weekly so this is a this is effectively a one day trade here listeners opening they just had earnings by the way so eight thousand of those going up expiring tomorrow 35 they're at 35 this morning so yeah that's Pretty much a coin flip trade at this point. It's like they paid a buck twenty one for these things. Oh my goodness! When the stock was thirty four ninety five, someone bought five hundred and kept coming two hundred more. Would you pay a buck twenty one for the April thirty fives expiring tomorrow in Intel listeners? When the stock was pretty much thirty five bucks again, you need that bad boy to keep rocking hard. And this is post earnings too. Oh, no, no. Earnings are today. This is pre-earnings. Okay. Earnings are today after the bell. I've lost track. It's been a while since I've been out in Intel listeners. I've lost track of the earnings days. So that makes a little more sense. That's still a crazy coin flip, but you get a little bit more momentum there. If the earnings had already come out, you're just buying a wasting asset at that point. But uh, Intel, all that a long way around to saying Intel number 10, 202,000. See how I get sucked down the rabbit hole of my old stomping grounds listeners. Number nine, let's go out to Snap. They've been on our radar a little bit of late. Kind of popping off a bit these days. By the way, looking at my platform here, they show related names, Palantir Technologies. I don't think of Snap and Palantir in the same sentence, yet apparently my platform here does. 1131, up about a quarter, a little over 2% today, and good for 229,000 contracts and the number nine spot. Number eight, AMD. Ever since they said, hey, me too, don't forget about us on the AI front last year. Uh, they've been rocking and rolling again and up a buck 60 today, trading 153 and about a third. It's like their low was 146 and three quarters. So they have a very much rallied hard off the lows out there. Uh, net right now up about one and a half points. Good for 297,000 contracts and the number eight spot. Number seven, it's Alphabet, 331,000. A lot of folks starting to get spooked on that front. Maybe uh, Meta pointing the way for some of these big tech names. And of course, Beamer, uh, not going to maybe be lighting the world on fire. 155 and a quarter off nearly four bucks today, or about two and a half percent trading 331,000 contracts out there. A uh, number six, good old softy, man. They're coming for it today. 396 and a half off 12 and a half bucks or a little over 3%. Of course, given how much this name has rallied, they could shed $12 a day for a while. Let's say, uh, let's go, let's go 20 days. How about that? They could shed 240 easily <laughs> and still have a lot of juice to squeeze out there. Either way, Microsoft number six, 364,000 contracts on the tape. Number five, it's the fruit company. Uncle Mike was just talking about them. They were looking kind of dire earlier this week, got down to the mid 60. In fact, they hit their 52 week low not too long ago, 162.80. Now 169 and a quarter. So they have rebounded nicely. From that low, still not back into the 170. Let's see, did they? Yeah, they broke it ever so briefly this morning. They got up to 170.61 before uh, giving up that ghost again. Good for number five, 391,000 contracts. Number four, off to the Amazonians. You know that Dow is just weighing them down now. 172.15, off about four and a half bucks or about two and a half percent. So no joy here 
for the Amazonians. Again, number four, 411,000. Again, surprisingly light volume all the way up to number four. We're all the way at number four, and we're only at 411 right now. So you might be forgiven for expecting a banger day and not exactly getting it. In fact, we're not even seeing Ford in the top 10 today, which is fascinating, uh, given uh, what they were setting off last night. Kind of dumpster fire on the EV front for them. They lost $1.3 billion, I believe, just on their EV unit which works out to losing $130,000 for every car they sold, which is impressive given they don't sell for that much. <laughs> it's an impressive feat in and of itself. So uh, Ford uh, kind of screwing the pooch out there, but uh, not even making it into the top 10 out there. NVIDIA, NVIDIA number three, uh, as the meatball alluded to, bucking the trend rallying today, maybe managing to turn the tide out there. As he joked, it is NVIDIA's market now. We're all just living in it. Up 27 bucks, trading about 824 right now, up about 3.5%. Almost a million contracts on the tape for NVIDIA. So you could see a huge dichotomy between uh, the 10 through 4 spots and then the top 3. We've already more than doubled from Amazon just to get to number 3, NVIDIA. 411 to now 983,000. So, again, a tale of two different markets out here today. Number 2, you can probably guess what it is, listeners. The artist formerly known as Facebook, now known of course, as Meta, 436.60 off, still about 56 and a half bucks. It was off far more in the after hours. Looks like they crushed it down to about 414. It's at 437 right now. So it was threatening to be off almost 100 handles at one point. So that's a, that's a heck of a haircut off the top. Of course, I was joking earlier, they have rallied substantially from the sub 100 level they were at not too long ago. So they could take a $100 haircut for a few days in a row and still be, be up substantially from that level. But nonetheless, spooking a lot of people out there who have expected naught but green from these names. Number two, 1.46 million. It's been a while since we've seen Meta putting up these kind of numbers out here. So fascinating stuff out there. But you know what the big dog is. Even on a banger week like this where all sorts of other headlines are dominating, Tesla somehow manages to maintain the pole position 1.8 million, closing in on 2 million contract. In fact, let's see. Let's re-rack it right now. Let's see if Tesla has gotten to that magical, mythical 2 million level since I've been talking. Nope, 1.84 million, so not putting up that much. But still, uh, 1.8 million when we ran these numbers a few minutes ago, listeners, and good for the number one spot. It's Tesla managing to rally right now up 2.5 bucks, uh, which is impressive given the broad sell-off. Also impressive given the uh, dumpster fire numbers they had earlier this week. Talk about a spin job, huh? They, they screwed the pooch on everything, and yet they come out and said, you know, we are going to double down, though, on this cheaper car everybody wants. And everyone's like, yay! <laughs> they rallied the stock anyway, despite the fact that every metric they could show was, was pretty much worse than expected. But it, all that shows, all that matters is the spin. They shouldn't call it earnings season, listeners. They should call it spin season. And they managed to spin effectively. So I tip my cap to them. They're almost 165 right now, up about 270 on the day. Of course, they got as low as about 138.80, not that long ago. So they've had a nice little rally from there, which was just, oh, oh earlier this week <laughs> on Monday. <laughs> so quite the rally from there. Can they maintain it? We shall see. Either way. Uh, earnings very much in the driver's seat right now, which, dare I say it, is refreshing. I'm kind of sick of the Fed and all this other macro nonsense. It's nice to sink your teeth in some actual numbers. Now, you could debate with Tesla, are we sinking our teeth into the actual numbers, which were terrible, or the spin, which was more positive. So you, you can obviously argue that, but at least there's some concrete numbers to be crunched here versus the will they, won't they dance with the Fed or whatever the heck's going on on the geopolitical front. Let's keep on rolling. Obviously, a banger week, and it's not done yet, listeners. We have American Airlines today. Southwest, I believe they already came out with their numbers before the bell, and they were uh, no bueno either. I think this Boeing thing is really screwing up a lot of the airlines. Uh, good old Microsoft talked about them already. Alphabet, Intel, Snap, and Roku. Roku, you know, I said it before, they were a perennial top tenner for a while ago. I'd say three or four years ago. They've kind of rolled off the list now, but maybe with their announcement, maybe they can get back into into the top 10 let's look right now if i can see it they're not even in the top 20 right now so roku having a hard time kind of getting out of its old shadow there listeners let's see what is it up to right now it's put up a well, 48,000 contract which is respectable for it given its adv is now a paltry 36,000 i used to joke about it. i was like wow what is this 
set top box manufacturer, which is what it predominantly was back then. Obviously, they don't even really make a lot of hardware anymore. It's more software and services. But still, it, a set top box manufacturer was in our top 10 every day. It was kind of surprising. And they have since obviously rolled off. But you know what? If you want some hot earnings action, we got you covered over there on the website, theoptionsinsider.com, including these up to the minute earnings move and earnings volatility reports and earnings season reports for you listeners. Uh, right now, we had before the bell Southwest Airlines. I just talked about them. They went into their announcement 2930. When we ran this report this morning, they were at 2655 right before showtime. They're at about 2680 now, so they've recovered a little bit. But they were pricing in only 5.4%, so they had moved nearly 10. So they were definitely outperforming on their straddle. You don't need me to tell you that Meta was outperforming on their straddle. I mean, my goodness. They were pricing in 8.4%. At the time we ran this report, right before showtime, they had sold off 13%. They've given up a little bit of that now. But still, uh, yeah, just uh, a banger out there on the meta from looking to see any other names that were popping off today good old beamer we were just talking about them uh, yesterday after the bell 184.10 is where they were when they went into their announcement they were pricing in 5.3 percent they delivered nearly nine percent to the dark side and they're off about eight and a half percent still right now or 15 and a half handle so beamer as you mentioned also combining to kind of really uh really spook the hell <laughs> out of everybody out there let's keep rolling let's look really quickly man so many so many names popping off just to tell we talked about this one a few times recently carrier global no one would think hvac was hot and yet this name has come up on our unusual activity scans a bunch of times over the last three to four months uh, so carrier popping off today before the bell as well was there any hot action out there pun intended uh, let's see they were at 54 and three quarters they came in 57 87 so that's a decent move. It's actually about in line with what they were pricing in. They're pricing in 5.4%. They delivered 5.7%. They're actually outperforming now, up seven and a quarter percent. So HVAC, who knew? The hot area, pun intended, out there. Man, there's so many listeners. You can find all these for yourselves. The options. Let's go out to Chipotle really quickly. Used to be the stealth Apple. Uh, these days, not so stealthy anymore with a stock price of 2,926.76. That's where they were going into their announcement. They were pricing in 5.7%. They actually underperformed. They only delivered 4.4%, but they were north of 3,000. 3054 when we ran this report. They have continued to rally since. 31.19, up 6.5%. Apparently, Chipotle in high demand, even in an inflationary period. Apparently, the chicken's in very high demand. They have limited their employees. They can't get their, for their free or cheap lunch, they can't get chicken anymore. That's only for the customers. So chicken, apparently, at Chipotle in high demand. And so is the stock rallying. Nearly 200 handles today. My goodness. Chipotle on the rampage. Let's look really quickly here for any others. Uh, there's a bunch popping off here, listeners. You can check these all out. And you know it's earnings season when the earnings move results reports. Just the report of the names that have popped off in the last 24 hours, last night or this morning, is multiple pages. You know we're hot in it, listeners. You can find that for yourselves. Really quick, let's do four. Let's do four really quickly as well. They were yesterday after the bell. They were right around 13 bucks when they went into their announcement. I know because I was maybe overwriting a little bit of Ford last night. Uh, let's see. So I was watching that 13 level very keenly. Uh, they were at 12.95. When we ran the support this morning, they were at 12.84. Uh, they have now continued to give up the ghost down to 12.70. They're pricing in 6.2%. They delivered about almost 1%. Yeah, they're off almost 2% now. So still underperforming. So as usual, it's a good name to write some premium in going into earnings. That was my thought. And it seems like. It does seem to be working out out there as we keep on rolling. We got a bunch of names popping off after the bell today. Microsoft, Alphabet, Intel after the bell, a Roku, as I mentioned, Snap. So you can check all those out for yourselves, theoptionsinsider.com. How is the season st stacking up right now, listeners? I have to keep scrolling. My goodness. There is a lot. We could do a whole show just how much data there is here, listeners. Uh, right now, the season with 134 names reporting, we're at 116%. So that's still a banger season. Our long-term average is now 109, which is just crazy to me to even say that out loud. That's ridiculous. But that's where we are. So 116 is still outperformance by just about any measure. And it seems like, uh, at least for the time being, earnings vol is going to remain hot. But let's see if some unusual activity is hot as well as we keep on rolling into the odd block. 
It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, time to get weird, time to get wild, time to unleash the Pied Piper of Cebo East. See what he has fixed his gaze on today. Let's, let's start things off. A name we haven't talked about in detail. We did just mention him, I think, briefly last week, but outside of that, it's been a while. Uh, it's PepsiCo, ticker symbol PEP, P-E-P. Used to be right down the street over here as well. I, I believe they have moved. As everyone's moving out of our little uh, area here around the studio. I'm not sure what that says, but uh, PepsiCo. A ticker symbol PEP 177 and two thirds right now. Another name is kind of bucking the trend up about a quarter today. On the year, though, let's see how things have looked out there in the beverage landscape. And uh, not great. Off 12 bucks or about six and a third percent. The high came last May. Almost 200 bucks. 196.88. The low was, looks like, back in, again, Halloween of last year. So they have managed to maintain their rally from there. Uh, t- they got down to 155.83, even though they almost gave it all back back in March. On March 5th, they got down to 162 again. So they've rallied 15 handles just from March 5th. They're 177 right now. So again, kind of glass half full. They've had a decent last uh, almost two months out here. But that said, Mr. Flowmaster, what did your eye of the uh, Pied Piper spot today out there? Is someone thinking the parte shall continue in PepsiCo or is the doom nicer? Uh, I think Pepsi's offices in Chicago are in the same building as the SIBO in the post office. Oh, they moved down the street. That's what they did. Yeah, because they were closer. Now they yeah. moved down where you guys are. That's true. Okay, so they're still around. Right. I take so, that back. Yeah. So yeah, this is just a – it showed up, actually showed up at the top of my trade of the day list for yesterday uh, with a big win on 1,999 of the May 180 calls. Uh, somebody paid 43 cents for them yesterday around 10, 11 in the morning stock was 172.36. Uh, I looked for headlines. I didn't, I don't see why the stock kind of rallied $5 over the rest of the day, but it did, even though, uh, SPX was relatively flat. Uh, they closed for a buck 65. So that's a $240,000 winner. And Pepsi's still a little bit higher today. You know, we talk about these and sometimes they, they do have a great first day and then it, and then they don't get out, and then the stock kind of retraces. Uh, in this case, they the stock's up another twenty seven cents, so uh, one seventy seven sixty eight. Uh, and I don't see them adjusting them, uh, although I do see a twenty one thousand of the April twenty sixth one eighty two half calls. That, those also look bought to open. Uh, so I don't know something. Uh, somebody likes some Pepsi, and it's just a nice simple call buyer that that worked very very well in terms of. Uh, leverage and direction and kind of still seems to be working. And they actually close them, which is nice. They get, po- they get points for actually taking the money off the table uh, as opposed to everyone else who rides things through expiration mysteriously or they ride it right up to the, the moment it makes money and then it plunges and they lose it all. We've seen that movie play out a million times. Uh, Mr. Meatball, PepsiCo, not really one we talk about that often here on the network. I'm curious if this one has come across your scans of late, and also what do you think about somebody actually making some money and taking it in PepsiCo, sir? Yeah, I mean, good job. Way to make money and way to way to close. That's the way you're supposed to trade. So excellent work. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, indeed. You keep that money, you, as we keep on rolling. Let's go out. This is a... This is a, definitely a newcomer. I would remember this one. This is Geo Group Inc. This is why we bring the Flowmaster on, listeners, to find nuggets like this. Sticker symbol Geo. You might be saying, what does Geo Group do? Do they make maps? Are they invested in geography? No, they are a publicly traded company that invests in private prisons. <laughs> so there you go, listeners. Uh, 1482 right now, off 26 cents. So not a great day, apparently in the private prison sector. Is it a boom year though with, for private prisons? The answer is undoubtedly yes. Apparently we were all hyped up about AI and all these other nonsense sectors. We should have all been dumping our money into private prisons because uh, Geo Group on the rampage, as the kids say, it was trading $7.16 
a year ago. It has more than doubled. It is up 765 on the year. In fact, it got up to, it's trading 1480, got up to almost 16 bucks, actually 1631. It did hit that back a few weeks ago on April 9th. So if you go from, you know, you're about seven bucks to 16, it's up even more. It's given up a little bit off the highs, but still, apparently, apparently private prisons are where it's at. Listen, and see, this is why you tune into the show every week for nuggets, pearls of wisdom like that. I'm just trying to see what's going on. They had a, an analyst upgrade back in February that helped boost them from 11 bucks up to about 13 or 14, but still, man, bonkers here. They're headquartered in Boca. Next time I go down to FIA Boca, I'm going to have to go knock on the uh, headquarters of the Geo Group and say, what's the deal? What's going on out here in private prison? Speaking of that, what is the deal, Mr. Flowmaster? Uh, what paper did you spot in everyone's new favorite uh, private prison's name, Geo Group? Yeah, I don't know if this is the most politically correct symbol to look at, but uh, it's funny. It actually showed up on one on one machine. It looked actually kind of bullish, uh, which is why I dug into it. We have fifteen thousand calls trading versus just three hundred puts. Uh, so just that that super high call to put ratio. Usually, uh, it'll flag on somebody's uh, bull scanner because some people the simplest way to look at things they do a high put call for bearish and a high call put for bullish. Uh, but when I actually went and dug into this, uh, almost all of that flow is in the May 10th, 15 calls. Uh, it does have earnings, I think, right around then. Uh, May 7th, I think, is when earnings are going to come out. And this is a call seller at the 15 strike. Stock's 1480 right now. Uh, stock is is had a good month. I think it's up um, about 30% in, in six weeks. Uh, so this just looks like I, I would bet you either somebody's long the stock and they're very happy with those gains and they do not want to, um, you know, they want to take a little delta off the table, uh, or um, somebody else might be looking at it as just you know a, a stock that might have something uh, to kind of push it back down a little bit. So this is a bearish one. I don't know what I would do on it. It's the way that stocks trade nowadays. I'm terrified to short anything, um, but. Uh, it's a bearish sign. It's just just a simple call call seller, but you know they're definitely looking at earnings, and they're you know they're they're only twenty cents out of the money. They got fifty cents for these. I don't hate them. I, I definitely don't fault this person for wanting to take some deltas off the table. This thing's been uh, pretty much doubled over the past year. I, I definitely don't don't hate this one. These are the May fifteens for prices around fifty cents, listeners. Uh, Mister Meatball, uh, unless you're really going far afield with some of your scans, I'm gonna guess you probably. Haven't been talking about Geo Group of late. What are your thoughts on uh, apparently there are fortunes to be made in the private prison sector and the fact that somebody is deciding to take some of that money off the table, sir? Yeah, interesting play. Uh, they're looking for income against this this position. Uh, you know, apparently they don't expect very much on earnings um, with the with this with this. Uh, Pretty aggressive, uh, pretty aggressive uh, call shorting. Um, so go, go geo. Wait, wait, were these a, a buy or a sell, Henry? I, I'm, I'm actually. This is a seller. Are you sure? I know that, that, yeah, that fifty cent one looks like a buyer, but it's all. I think they were selling it. I'm pretty I'm, sure. It's, it's I'm all looking, traded. Um, I'm looking at the flow from this morning. You know, they started buying it at like twenty minutes after the bell in small increments and at the time and the market was 40 45 where they offered out and the market makers lifted it is that what happened yeah yeah okay. because i can see in that that open close data shows customer seller the SIBO stuff at least 1500 of them just before 10 a.m okay so yeah i mean it's an income play I, I i do like it um and then henry did you see the that one by that big one by two in gild in Gil gilead I did not look at that one today. Oh, pull it up. We, we have that up. We have that up coming up next if you want. We'll get there really quickly. First, yes, I want to talk about we'll it. We'll get to that. Let's finish up Henry's here first, but we, I do have that marked here on the sheet. You will see it. As Let's finish up here, though, with a funky one because this one just sounds all kinds of bonkers. Uh, this is Peloton. We just talked about them recently on Oddities, listeners. As you'll recall, we had a listener writing in when the stock was around three half, uh, wondering if he should sell. I think they were the June three puts for around 30 cents, so he was getting – in the ballpark of, of 10% for those. Obviously, the stock has since sold off pretty aggressively. It sold off 50 cents almost instantly, so got down to that strike. I never heard back. I'll have to see if that listener did sell those puts or not. 
Either way, 30 cents, he's still looking good. He's in for 270, if that's the case. Uh, the stock actually managing to rally today up to about three bucks. It's pretty much at the 52 week low. In fact, it was looks like it was there this morning, 291, set a new low. So kind of a rough time. But Mr. Mr. Flowmaster, I had to read your thing here twice to make sure I, I read the strikes correctly. Am I seeing this correctly? Someone bought the 710 December vertical. Is that what you found? Yeah, and in my research on this, I, I had to do the math to figure out how how badly down this stock is from COVID. It's down 98%. It was at 167 briefly in 2021. It's at $3 now, and I do own some uh, that I have taken a, a bath on. Uh, but maybe somebody thinks there's going to be – maybe somebody's a believer. So – yeah, it was a 20,000 lot buyer, the D710 call spread. They paid 28 cents. Uh, and you can actually look through the trade history. It's, it's easy to see in Trade Alert uh, to see when the tens were opened, because the sevens are definitely opening today, but the tens are not. And you can see the 10 calls were bought in a straight outright buy um, on February 28th and then also on May, on March 1st, uh, around a buck five ish. Stock was a dollar higher then. So they're laying out more money. Uh, to take these calls, which are a mile away, and make them a little bit more possible. Um, you know, it is December, right? They got six months, seven months for this to work out, eight months even. Uh, so maybe somebody thinks we'll we'll get a bounce, or I don't know, maybe there'll be some other pandemic that'll uh, that, <laughs> that'll give Peloton a pop. But just it's 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 always important to look at a. It's important to look at structures, right? You know, call spreads and put spreads. Some are pretty hard to make sense of, but some of them are pretty easy. In this case, it was easy to see what it was and then back up a few steps and try to figure out uh, if it's an adjustment of an existing trade. And, and that's what this one is. But it's definitely a bullish sign in Peloton. I mean, it's one of these names that's down so much. Uh, yes, it could go all the way to zero, uh, but it's so beaten up that, uh, you know, maybe somebody wants to have a decent position out there in case we get a bounce. Even still, when they were buying the 10s, they were still ridiculously out of the money. <laughs> they paid a buck for those yeah. things. My goodness. So they were, uh, you could already argue when the stock was around four and a half bucks, paying a buck for the D10s was still pretty ridiculous. Good thing Alex wasn't here for that one. He would be very offended. Uh, and uh, yeah, and rolling them now to the sevens, I guess a little bit of a uh, capitulation there. But uh, funky stuff. Mr. Mr. Meatball, if you have any thoughts on this kind of still ridiculous paper in Peloton, then speaking of ridiculous paper, this one came across our radar today as well. Uh, this is, of course, Gilead, a massive uh, one by two put spread. Don't see those too often. You want to walk us through that as well? Have at it, sir. Yeah, the, well, the Peloton is just throwing bad money after bad. I think they're going the way of the Dodo um, or maybe not the way of the Dodo, but they, they'll be acquired by somebody. Um you know, it, it doesn't really make sense. The, the, the current model business model, uh, you know, we've actually seen Mark. I wanted to talk about these cause we've seen this trade in some of these medical stocks a few times. So ahead of Boston scientific traders were buying the 67, 72 and a half one by two and the 70, 75 one by two, call, both call spreads. Uh, and that was the day before earnings and lo and behold, Boston scientific's pops. Here we have in Gilead, G-I-L-D, a trader doing the opposite. Um, they have bought, and let me load up the, the exact size. They have bought about 20, what was, uh, it is, the biggest trade was 8,500 8, by 17,000. But they've done uh, a total of 12 by 24 buying 12,000 to open of the 66 puts, which are 50 cents in the money, selling 24,000 of the 62 puts. Uh, so this is a one by two. They're basically looking for it to drop toward, you know, perfect world. They want it to be 6201. Uh, so they are, you know, uh, Gilead's down about a buck and a half right now, buck 60. They're looking for more downside in that one coming out of earnings which are tonight. So this is a, a timely trade, to say the least. Very timely. Mr. Flowmaster, so this one came across our radar. I'm curious what you think. We don't see a ton of size put one by twos. I don't know why. They can be a very useful structure, but we don't see a ton of them. Uh, what are your thoughts out here on this uh, 66, 62 sizable put one by two and everyone's favorite, Gilead? Uh, yeah, it's it is definitely an interesting one, especially because a lot of times we see these ratio spreads and they go further out of the money. 
Uh, you know, this one looks like somebody really has a pretty specific uh, scenario in mind, and it's for that stock to get down to about three or four bucks from here. Um, good size trade. I mean, I, I like one by twos, except that uh, the marks can be pretty scary, right? As, as you start to go towards the direction you want, uh, that the, the one that you're short twice as many of them really can start to blow up and it gets terrifying. Um, so we don't see it as much. It's very easy to lay it on paper and say, well, this is great. My, you know, I'll make this much dip down to the 62 level. And then my break evens, you know, what around 60, around 58, I can handle that. But the problem is, is as you start to sell off that, the side that you are short several of, uh, really can start to, to, to get some value and just make the trade look pretty bad, even though the scenario hasn't really changed. So, um, I think it's, I think it's a pretty, pretty, uh, aggressive way to put in a position too. It is interesting, listeners. Fascinating stuff. We'll keep an eye on all of this as it's time for us to roll on into our final segment. It is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on for the rest of the week into the weekend. We also catch up on some of your feedback on some of our questions of the week out there. Mr. Uncle Mike, I'll start with you because we got some questions for you out here. First off, what are you keeping an eye on until the Monday episode? And then B, we have two very timely questions of the week that are kind of going simultaneous right now. We're doubling up this week. First off, everyone's all a Twitter, a buzz about the notion of trading stocks 24-7, SEC considering it, NYSE pulling their members about it. So we went out to our audience very simply and asked them, do you think stocks should trade 24 hours a day? Yes or no? Very simple. And then as a corollary to that, as we were debating that yesterday on our Options Boot Camp show, we added an extra wrinkle a second question of the week, with, if you will, which is predicated on the first, which is if something changes on the stock front and U.S. options hours are extended as a result, what format should that take? We've heard a lot of debate about that over the years as well. Should it just go straight full 24-hour options trading? Should it be maybe a limited pilot to the high-volume names? Should it maybe be limited to the time of year, so earnings season only, or something else entirely? Feel free to go bonkers with your answer because it is kind of bonkers, but it's fun nonetheless. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you. What are your thoughts? Should stocks go 24-7, yay or nay? B, if options trading is extended, what format should that take? Maybe you have your own answer to it. And then C, what are you keeping an eye on until the Monday show? All right, so that's a lot to unpack. So in terms of should stocks trade 24 hours, I mean, you can trade extended hours stocks right now, and if it's liquid enough, you can usually get filled. Um, I know they don't go 24 hours, but I mean, in reality, I don't know of a need for it. The only time that I would, at least in my experience, that let's say I happen to be up at 2 a.m. and a company that I own all of a sudden um, has some type of chemical leak that's going to cause it to go belly up or whatever. Unless something like that happens, I personally would not have a need for it or a want for it. Um, I struggle enough personally with looking at futures quotes uh, at 10 at night or whatever, when I'm supposed to be getting ready to go to bed, hanging out with my family or whatever. I just think for the good of all humanity, let's not go 24 hours. If we have a major world event and you need to hedge your market portfolio, we have futures for that. And even the futures are not very liquid. So I would say let's not do it. If we did do it, would we want to have options? I think we, we would have to have options 24 hours if we were having stocks 24 hours. But once again, the liquidity is not going to be that great. So I really think I like the system the way it is right now, quite honestly. In terms of what I'm watching for next week, uh, seeing if we can uh, hold the 5,000 level, if we have bad earnings tonight, or if we can rally if we have good earnings uh, before Monday's show. And then continuing to watch rates and then continuing to see if uh, silver and gold can recover from their recent pullbacks. And since we're coming up against it, where can folks go if they want more Uncle Mike goodness in their lives? Follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusa, T-O-S-A-W, or check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. Set up an appointment with me. We'll talk long-term investments, and I'm not afraid to talk about options in that mix. 
And maybe he'll talk after hours, uh, options, or stock trading with you. You never know. Hit him up over there. Let's go out to the meatball. Same three questions for you, Mr. Meatball. Should stocks trade 24 hours a day? Yes or no? B, if options are extended, what format should that take? And then C, what are you keeping an eye on for the rest of the week? And then D, on top of all of that, we'll add a fourth. Where should folks go if they want more meatball goodness in their lives? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of with Mike. I don't know that we need it. We already have extended hours. Um, but if you want to do the top hundred stocks or, or something along those lines, the ones that are widely held in liquid and things like that, I, I don't see how that would be a problem. If you are going to list, st- have stocks run in 24 hours, I don't know that you necessarily need options. Um, I, I think you could, those markets would be ridiculously wide. CME try and trade an ES option overnight. Good luck. Um, Uh, And what we will see is a bunch of accidents from sleepy overnight market makers. And and we'll be like, what the heck happened in this stock? Um, So that that's actually something I'd be thinking about if, if, if I'm the the firms involved. Uh, And then what am I keeping an eye on PCE? And we got these two big earnings tonight. Uh, and if you want to see what I'm up to, follow me on Twitter at option pit and, uh, go to optionpit.com for all my deep insight and analysis. Dot com option pit. Dot com. All right. And last but not least, Mr. Flowmaster, same three questions for you. Full, uh, 24 seven stock trading. Yay or nay B if options are extended, what format do you think that should take? C, what are you keeping an eye on until you and I get together in person next week at OIC, which is awesome. And then D, if folks want more SIBO goodness in their lives, where should they go? What should they do? Okay, I'll answer them backwards because that's how I can remember it. SIBO.com uh, slash RMA, which stands for Risk and Market Analytics, is where you can go to see the services and data that we offer and to request, request a trial. So visit us. Uh, you know, a couple of things I'll be looking at. One is I, I put together, I'm pretty happy with the deck, two decks I'm going to present at um, at OIC in Asheville. Uh, one is digging into the VIX 1D, which is a new indicator that SIBO put out uh, last year, and just kind of how to make use of it. That's the one thing that makes me kind of excited. Another one is how to actually see the options positions that these option embedded uh, yield ETFs uh, are trading. So that's also kind of a neat thing. You can use our tools to basically back out and say, oh, here's the trade that they did for, you know, the IWMY ETF or the QQQY ETF. So it's kind of neat. Uh, and then I'll also be watching earnings. You know, definitely this meta uh, meta one is shaking some things up. Uh, there's there's big movers, you know, in, in uh, when you do slash mover in trade alert, you know, it's a busy day when the top 10 lists are all like well into the double digits. I have, we've, I get to see some names that are up 25 to 37 percent today and then a bunch that are down 18, 19, 16 percent. So, uh, ooh, including Harley Davidson, that one's down 16 percent after earnings. So lots to look at. Um, and I'm excited to see you down in uh, at OIC. Yeah, we'll do this dance in person next week, which should be fun, listeners. So look forward to a live and in-person, at least for half of the show next week. Myself and the Flowmaster will be down at OIC. I'll see if I can make it into his sessions as well so I can boo and hiss and throw tomatoes at him. That'll be me in the back of the room, Henry, just booing loudly. So if you're wondering who's doing that, that will be me. Uh, In the meantime, listeners, you can check out all those goodies for yourselves. SIBO.com slash RMA. Before we get out of here, let's reveal what you folks have on the brain for all these questions of the week right now. And right now, that's why I love our audience. You know, we, we, we speak to the bleeding edge folks. So you, you might assume, oh, they want all of it. Gimme, gimme, gimme 24 seven. No, you are a deeply thoughtful and considerate bunch because 72.3% of you right now say, no, you don't want after hour stock trading, which I think is awesome. I mean, not just that you agree with us, but that you take the time to really consider this stuff and say, you know, it'd be cool to get these things, but if the experience is subpar and it causes other issues, then maybe we don't want it. So that shows a very nuanced opinion. We love that. 27.7% say yes. We like you folks too. Don't worry about it. And if options do get extended, what format should it take? It's ticking on me right now as we speak. Uh, Let's lock it in here. 52.6% of you say Options should go full 24 hours a day if that's going to be the case. 36.8% saying high volume names only, and then a tie 5.3% each for earnings season only 
and other, which she wrote in for a bunch of others about how you don't want it. So I get that. Uh, that is going to do it for the option block today. Don't worry, though. If you want more in your lives, I'll be back post haste with a little bit of the old twifo. So if you're hanging out in the pro, then just hang out. I'll be back in a little bit with this week in futures options. Then, of course, back again tomorrow with Vol Views. Going to add some fun stuff to Vol Views tomorrow. Those of you who've been asking for a little bit of international flavor on the Vol front, well, you're going to be happy campers tomorrow. What do I mean? Well, I guess you got to tune into Volatility Views tomorrow to find out. After that, of course, one final time, exclusively for your pro folks, we're back again with options oddities. Then I'm back again on Monday here in the studio for the old OB before I head down to Asheville for OIC next week, where next Thursday I'll be seeing the Flowmaster in person. Should be fun. Until then, stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>